I'm a crier. And if I cry, I'm going to really sing off key, so I'm not going to do that. You and I, T.Y. <laughs> I, my heart is um, really wide open. I am really happy to be here in this room. Thank you, Gina, for being by my side now and then. And we got many more years to rock on together. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, kind of fly. Um, can you guys roll that back? I really need this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I am really so grateful to be here with you all this evening. Um, Garrett Morris, Taraji B. Henson, Kelvin Harris Jr., Garrett Morrison, and Jeffrey Wright. Congratulations. Your artistry continues to uphold our legacy. And I am forever inspired by each of you. Thank you to, where's Jeff and Nicole? I don't know where they are. Oh, there you are, right there in front of me. I'm sorry to Jeff and Nicole Friday for building American Black Film Festival. Thank you for listening and accepting your call to do what was long overdue and creating a place for our stories to be honored, for black people to be the taste-making seat, be in the taste-making seat, excuse me. You have been the first stop for so many brilliant careers and without you, without ABFF, so much would not be possible. Thank you. To be celebrated in this room with all of you and accept this visionary award is truly an honor. When I stand before you, all I can think about is 22-year-old Mara, the one Gina talked about. I remember every early morning I woke up and had to remind myself to have faith, knowing that I'd have to carve out a place for myself in an industry that had shown me time and time again that we were not human enough for our stories to matter. I remember the late night phone calls with my wise and beautiful and loving mother, Joan, who, who, is, who is here with me tonight. The hours I'd spend writing and rewriting my scripts at Insomnia Cafe, praying someday. Who knows about Insomnia Cafe in this room? Okay. <laughs> praying that someday someone would pick it up and see what I saw, the worth of my voice. I think of that Mara, and I am filled with a deep, almost parenting pride that she stayed true to her vision. And what she reminds me is that it was only possible for her to see past the needs of tomorrow and actually dream because of the trailba trailblazers who made sure to make a moment and let young Mara know that they too saw her. Ralph and Melba Farquhar, Sarah Finney Johnson, Debbie Allen and Mark Atkins, I speak your names because I would not be here without you tonight and your vision of me. And most importantly, I am thankful to have three incredible men in my life who are both my purpose and my protection. I thank you for being here tonight and by my side, Celine and Nasir. Shout out to Yassine, who's holding it down in college. <laughs> as well as my granddaughter, Allison, who flew in from Sacramento to be in here to celebrate with me tonight. Thank you. And reflecting on what took me from a young production assistant under Ralph's guidance to a successful showrunner of over 400 plus episodes of TV. <laughs> and counting. I took a step back and realized that it is actually because of you. Every portrait I have made is of us. The ink in my pen is dipped in a lifetime of seeing you, of observing you, of loving you, Suzanne. Every story borrowed from the village of women who poured into me paint colors of fortitude, courage, and critical thinking, coding me in history and humor and sass and a lot of class, borrowed from the people who have changed me the most or simply the last person who made me laugh. That is what has made up of my vision. It has been you, my love of you, my love of us. Moments like these, they are gifts. 
honestly being a visionary, being someone who can maybe see sometimes what others cannot, can be lonely. It also can be filled with a lot of overthinking and self-doubt, but it can also be an opportunity to embark on one of the best relationships ever, and that is being a co-creator with the voice inside of each of us. Early on in life, I recognized that vision comes through a whisper. And because of that belief, I know that I never walk alone. But I am also human, and part of the human experience is connection and relationship and being recognized for one's bravery and march and ability to build and create works that not only change your life but others. Though I am proud of what I've created over a 27-year professional history, I am most proud of the job creation and opportunities for others to live out their dreams. I wore red tonight in honor of my grandmother, Helen Fulmore, who just turned 102 years old. I used to be scared of the color red on my nails, but I, not anymore. I stand proudly with her. She not only taught us, but demonstrated a core truth. Our people will thrive when all of us lift as we climb. We must, even on the days that it is not convenient or rewarding, I lift as I climb. Always have, always will. For if my voice only served me and mine, that would be thinking too small of the voice of God and the meaning of my life. That whisper, that God whisper to right our humanity from a place of our desires and dreams anchored in our history of resilience and resistance and reclamation of our humanity, despite the incessant and torture we endure, I, I too do it at a pace that includes other black storytellers in the vision that God put on my life. But a girl also likes to get dressed up <laughs> and smell her flowers and have this moment to say something. And what I want to say is this, we are still at war. That is nothing new to us as black people. My most recent work on Stamp from the Beginning refocused me of the importance of our images. We cannot afford to waste these opportunities to reflect back our community, our specific and collective humanity. For art is both a mirror and a porter to one's own spirit. Art can unlock the truth within us or it can be used as propaganda to further the lies about us to keep us trapped in our victimization versus our growth and expansion. We've been res resisting the inhumane treatment of us since 1619, I heard, and it has taken all of our time, emotions, resources, attention to fight it. It is fueled with anger and injustice, unfairness, low wages, and gatekeeping, but imperialism is dying and is waging its last big fight, and though they have a heavy swing and a strong punch, we have to stay boots on the ground for the survival of our dreams of today and tomorrow. But we must pause in the revolution to consider what is on the other side of this fight. This fight that is now in our hands, and in this room of image makers and storytellers, whether we want to admit it or not, we are our biggest weapon in this war. Our images matter. How we execute them matter. How they live, for they will live longer than we do. We have to demand more of ourselves in the stories we tell about us. When I got my Netflix deal, I felt like I finally made it, that I could take the liberty of treating myself to my dream offices. So I built a space that represented the belief that work is a prayer and prayer deserves a sanctuary. God comes with me to work every day, and so it deserves a space of beauty to support my need to access my creativity. But as I sat in my dreamy place, and it is fly, <laughs> the whisper came loud and clear, build it now. So I built the writer's colony. Why? Because investing in people is, is the other side of the revolution. Is it not, Jeff and Nicole? Once we have cleared the land of the injustice, who will be there to build and scale it to success? Writers. Great scripts 
beget great talent that make Oscar-worthy films as Cora Jefferson and Jeffrey Wright have definitely proved this past year. One well-crafted script generates jobs, gathers the best of our talent, and impacts the spirit of the viewer. In June 2021, I built a sanctuary and residency for black writers to have a place to write so they can create a process and practice of writing, a place to belong because we build lives and careers in community, and a place to find your voice because once we find that, that's how we do everything. I named it the Writer's Colony because the only way to recolonize our own minds and rescue us from the false narrative other, another has written about us is for us to shape our own narratives rooted in the complexity of our humanity. I encourage the collective you that is us and especially our children to read more. I encourage you to write down feelings and emotions and dreams and desires. I encourage you to sit in silence and listen to the voice within to tell you what to do with those thoughts and feelings and emotions and dreams and desires. I encourage you to experience life more from a place of play and curiosity. I encourage you to catch those moments of inspiration and brilliant ideas that will, will inevitably crack through and then learn how to craft them into works worthy of gathering a community of artisans to tell stories that shift us from the fight to the flight of our humanity. And guess what? All it will cost is our time, our commitment, our effort, our study, and our laptop computer. <laughs> and so I'd like to leave you with this. Listen to the whisper. Let it guide you and watch, you will build something that takes your breath away and inspires you to keep going. And with that, I say, stay tuned. Thank you, have a lovely evening.